threw the proverbial stone in a glass house because food contamination can happen to everyone. Wada points out in a quote, apart from China in particular, there have been several of these cases in the United States in the past few months alone where highly intricate contamination scenarios were accepted. Mind the words, highly intricate. And highly intricate it is. Hello and welcome again to the Air Geopolitics Podcast. Geopolitical Queen here with today's episode on Western conspiracy theories that are aimed at defaming other athletes. Some years ago, when the global hypocritical bully USA realized that it couldn't beat Russia on the sports field, It found a way to get around it by pressurizing the World Athletic Doping Agency WADA to claim that Russian athletes were too good because they all doped. Without any evidence, WADA claimed that the Russian doping was a systematic process which had been carried out since the Soviet days. And that was enough proof to ban all Russian athletes from participating in international events. Some athletes at the time appealed this judgment and they were allowed to participate in some events. But with time, they just ignored the debased water and stayed away. Then came the special military operation in Ukraine in 2022. And by extension, athletes who had no business in government decisions, nor were they the soldiers fighting in Ukraine, were banned from sports events participation. The U.S. thought its tricks had won only to meet capable and better Chinese athletes, beating them in sports events. Not happy about it, they picked up a story of about three years ago, that was in 2021, and tainted all the 23 swimming athletes who were participating in the Paris 2024 competition with an allegation without any proof of doping. Just like how a chief dopist like Michael Johnson cast a doping curse on Toby Amundsen of Nigeria's head when she won a gold medal in 2022, which till date has led to Toby being disrespected and shunned for her hard work as a dopist, when all tests till date have proven negative. It simply looks like when American athletes win, it is hard work. But when other athletes win, it is supposed to be dope. So how best can they cast doubts about the hard work of the Chinese athletes than to accuse them of doping? Well, take a listen to the real story. In the latest of a series of articles in the New York Times, a much acclaimed and two times Pulitzer Prize winner journalist doesn't pull his punches when writing about Team China, and he's been at it since at least last April. This investigative uh, journalist extraordinary by the name of Michael Schmidt is upping the ante in his efforts to defame Chinese swimmers. On April the 20th, he co-authored an article which supposedly broke the story about 23 Chinese swimmers testing positive before the Tokyo Games but were allowed to compete and ultimately won medals. Since then, he has authored 15 articles focusing on Chinese swimmers. Dedication or obsession? His main point is more like a conspiracy theory. 
Chinese swimmers take performance enhancing drugs or PEDs, while WADA, the World Anti Doping Agency, and World Aquatics, formerly FINA, are in cahoots to hush it up. What exactly is the story? In his latest article, Schmidt continues to mislead the reader about food contamination. Thing is, some countries use growth promoters to feed beef cattle. It is pervasive, using WADA's words, for athletes to unknowingly ingest certain banned substances. And these substances have been identified in trace amount, resulting in Chinese swimmers testing positive. After rigorous investigation and independent review, WADA accepted the conclusion that these were food contamination cases which did not warrant any penalty unless new evidence emerges. The matter has been discussed openly and repeatedly among the anti-doping communities, and thousands of food contamination cases have been confirmed across the world over the years. It's not black and white, as Schmidt suggests. Schmidt threw the proverbial stone in a glass house because food contamination can happen to everyone. What I points out in a quote, Apart from China in particular, there have been several of these cases in the United States in the past few months alone where highly intricate contamination scenarios were accepted. Mind the words, highly intricate. That's our tumbleweed moment here. Looks like people are not totally convinced. In fact, the most recent known US case involves track and field athlete Ariel Knighton. He tested positive in March for Trembolone, a PED, but U.S. anti-doping agency Wasada said it was food contamination. Knighton qualified at the Paris Games before the decision was reviewed by WADA. If Schmidt is right, should Knighton be suspended before his name is cleared? And if WADA is not to be trusted, who holds USADA accountable? Righteous Schmidt should get on his high horse and demand that WADA steps in here as well. Schmidt and his co-author also rant about transparency. They argue that China has not disclosed that the Chinese swimmers were tested positive. He and other doubters criticize China for not publicizing the positive results as quote-unquote rules require. But neither WADA nor World Aquatics have any issue with China's conduct on this case. There are specific rules about information sharing and disclosure in WADA's anti-doping code, and obviously WADA is the most authoritative uh, agency in the interpretation of these rules. So when talking about rules, whose rules is Schmidt referring to? His own? The legacy media is just part of the crumbling empire that's clutching at straws to survive. As we speak, the U.S. Justice Department and the FBI have opened a criminal investigation involving the Chinese case based on a domestic anti-doping law, another blatant example of long-arm jurisdiction. And a bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers has threatened to cut U.S. funding for WADA. Are we not seeing the classic pattern of foul play made in USA? Whoever doesn't agree with it is Partial at best, corrupt at worst. The World Health Organization, the World Trade Organization, the UNESCO, the International Court of Justice, and the list goes on. Nobody complained about WADA when Chinese or Russian players were punished. Face it, Michael Schmidt, you cry foul, but you are making a fool of yourself. You can write as much tosh as you want about China and WADA. Chinese athletes will forge ahead. What doesn't break us makes us stronger. So what do you think? Should we continue believing the bullying propaganda of it being only one nation that is good enough in this world? Or we should try looking at the other side of the mirror to see who is trying to throw stones standing outside the tent. Well, kindly leave your comments in the comment section below. And thanks for tuning in. I will be back with the next broadcast. Good day.